Uh, nice to meet you and uh, did you enjoy your meal, your lunch today? If no, go and eat after the talk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as I have said, uh, we will talk about Cypress, uh, about functional and visual testing with Cypress.io. Uh, but uh, firstly, I have this awesome QR code. Uh, it is live sharing of presentation slides. We will have some code on slides, so if you want, you can scan it right now while I will ask you some questions. And the first one with will be like, uh, did you heard about Cypress? Please raise your hand. Yeah, a lot of people. I will be staying here because I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, if you were heard about Cyprus, did you work with it? Did you try it somewhere? Raise your hand. Yeah, nice. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to make presentation about Cyprus because everybody knows about us. But I'm sure it will be interesting for you. And yeah, it's nice. It's last seconds to share the QR code, and we are starting. My name is Dmitry Kovalenko. I'm from Ukraine and I'm working at Cypress.io. Uh, I'm doing something for open source community. You can find me on GitHub. There's my Twitter. And also there is a link to the presentation slides in the middle, right there. So you can just, if you want, you can take this presentation right now. And today I'm presenting Cypress team for you. Uh, and who we are? Uh, we are just 25 people all over the world that are trying to make software world a little bit friendlier for everybody. Actually, 26 already because yesterday a new engineer joined our team. Uh, and there is 19 engineers and a lot of people. And what we are working on? Uh, you all heard about Cypress.io. Uh, and as you can see on slide, this is a tool for reliably testing anything that runs in a browser. Uh, a lot of things can be run in a browser. But today we're trying to understand why do we actually need Cypress, uh, why, why it's reliable, and uh, how we can make it fun uh, trying to write a task with Cypress, and why you need to at least try that. But firstly, I need to answer you on the two most popular questions about Cypress. And the first one is how much. Uh, because all these hype things are always costs, but Cypress is free for everybody. You can use Cypress for free. It's an MIT license open source project. Uh, and yeah, you're right. We're a company. So we're somehow monet monetizing things. We have some services around Cypress. Uh, it's a paid dashboard and GitHub integration uh, that allows you to record tests, check test results in PR comments. But Cypress itself and uh, actually test runner will be free for everybody. Uh, and uh, will not have any paid features in the future. And the second most asked question is stickers. And I have some for you. Uh, so yeah, I have a lot of stickers. So ask me a good question or meet me in conference. Give me a good story. I'll give you one. No problems. <laughs> and you're ready. Let's dive in. Uh, yeah, we're diving into the open source project, to the test runner. And what do we need to answer first? And the first project, the first question for any project will be, uh, why? Uh, why do we actually need Cypress? Why do we need actually one more tool? Uh, on this conference, you have heard a lot about different testing tools. You will heard about a lot of more in the future. So why do we need this particular one? And this is a uh, super important question because only if you will answer on it, on it, you will understand. Why do we actually need it? And uh, the, the answer to this question is, uh, do, we s do we want to be like the best testing tool or we want to be like another one testing tool? And uh, actually, I think that there are no winners uh, on open source projects or uh, test runners. We are not trying to steal a piece of pie of Selenium or some other testing tool. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure that if we will imagine that this Pi is actually uh, all software world, so uh, all software project in the world, this part will be writing tests. And we're working to for the other part, for the projects that are not writing any end-to-end -end tests and actually don't want to for some reasons. And we're trying to fix some of that, r that reasons. Uh, today I'm going to show you how we are trying to achieve two goals of Cypress. 
Uh, there are, that's it. The first one is reliability of our test. So we are trying to make our test as confident as possible. And the next one is developer experience. Because we are sure that if developer or engineer enjoys writing tests, if engineer firstly enjoy writing tests, everybody wins. User will get more quality software, business will get more users, and everybody fun and everybody enjoy. So uh, we, are s we will start from actually developer experience, how we are working to make Cypress uh, the most enjoyable tool. And everything starts actually for anything, ev for any testing tool or, or any open source library, everything starts from installation. And that's really it you need to install Cypress. But don't hurry, uh, I will explain you a little bit what's going on here. The first comment, uh, brew install node. Uh, if you're using MacBook, you may be using brew package manager, you are probably using, so I have created this comment, but actually it will be different for different operating system. And it needs to install Node.js. Node.js, it's runtime environment for JavaScript because Cypress is written in JavaScript and you are actually writing tests in JavaScript. We will discuss why actually JavaScript, why not, in other, why not other languages in a moment. But you need to install Node.js somehow. And the next command will actually install Cypress package using NPM. And NPM is provided by Node.js automatically. This thing will load Cypress, and on the first load, it will on the first install, it will also load uh, for f for about uh, 100 megabytes of binary data required Cypress to be run. This will be cached and will not be downloaded until Cypress needs to be updated. Once you will install it, you need to run it, and that's also everything that you need to run it. And once you will enter this command to terminal, you will see this application. Uh, this is a part of that binary data that was downloaded. And this is an Electron application, like, you know, uh, all this Slack, VS Code, all these memory eaters on your laptops. Uh, what does it need for? Uh, it is displaying all the specs you have in the project, a uh, list of files, and you can run one file from this spec, or you can run all the specs all the specs. That's it. We are running some spec, and what we'll see, we'll see this page. Uh, as you can see, this is a native. This is just Chrome browser. It's a little bit different from what you are using because there is installed Cypress extension in the right corner. Uh, and what is doing? Uh, it is displaying on the left side. It is displaying the list of your tests, and moreover, the list of comments in the real time which are executing right in your tests. On the right side, you will see your application in the real time. It's a real application that is right now doing something and controlled by Automate Software. Yeah, there is a hint that right now Chrome is controlled by Automate Software. And that's it. <laughs> Everything you need to know about Cypress, I have, so I have said you, but now you probably ask me, where is the code? And there is Cypress code. Uh, this is actually Cypress syntax. And do you know which language it is? JavaScript. Yeah, I have said it <laughs> two minutes ago. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, by the way, uh, do you have any experience in JavaScript? Please raise your hand. Yeah, not so many. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, because uh, Cypress does not require from you any advanced JavaScript in right there. Uh, it is just very, uh, like, S simple syntax and it yeah it can be described like uh, an additional syntax for JavaScript because uh, writing tests are always different from writing code in JavaScript. So what do we have? Uh, it is uh, Cypress based on Mocha. It is test framework. Uh, you will hear about it tomorrow on one of the talk, and uh, you cannot change it. Somebody will say that it's a problem. Yeah, what if I want to use, for example, Jasmine? Uh, but somebody will say that it is really weird when you have two different projects using the same tools for uh, running tests, but their code looks entirely different. So we decided to use Mocha and very basic of syntax Cypress. Describe. Uh, it's just uh, s several specs that combine it in one context. Before each uh, surprise will run before each test. And Cypress tests, uh, you can also use before uh, before as before all. 
And here is Cypress test. You are setting Cypress test name, and all the commands that are executed by Cypress automatically uh, they are attached to the global Cy variable. Uh, and make sure that here is uh, no additional uh, async await syntax. Uh, there is no weights, there is no async await syntax. Like for example, here, uh, where we can see that uh, most of the test is like some additional code, like immediately in invocated function at the top, then async awaits. And Cypress is doing everything, uh, every async awaiting, async awaiting by itself because all the commands in our end to end tests by default are asynchronous. Uh, but what is more important if we are talking about syntax uh, is uh, the expressiveness. We think that its expressiveness of tests are really important, so you can just uh, read your test and understand without actually uh, knows how Cypress works, understand what's going on there. I love to compare it to this stuff. Uh, let's change Cypress global Cypress variable to user, and we can read our test like uh, before each uh, user visiting some page, user gets a mail field typing there something, then it observes that uh, something is showed in validation error, uh, and so on and so forth. Somebody even using Cypress test as some kind of documentation and generating user guides based on Cypress test, which is really important. And I'm sure you are tired from this like demonstration, so I have one formula for you. It's very simple, don't worry. One time to see, is better than 100 times to hear. And this is the time for live demo of Cypress. Wish me some luck. Thanks. Uh, and I have prepared a project. Uh, can you hear it well? Right? So uh, we have the code. Uh, here is a simple test for this, so, so for TestCon software, uh, for TestCon, com for TestCon conference website. Yeah, I, s I spelled it. Uh, let's run our tests. Uh, l firstly, let's go through the syntax. So what we are doing? We are just will test speakers page. Uh, we will visit some page and contains it. Uh, check that this page contains speakers lineup and check that there are 56 speakers. Let's run it. Oh, oh, oh. it is a spoilers. I'll run it. It is just a simple comment. And once, uh, once I will run it, let me pull it to the different screen. And once I will run it, I will see exactly that uh, electron application that I have said you about in a few minutes. And here you can also change the browser. There are two, uh, Chrome and Electron. I heard that there are some other browsers, but I didn't see them before. Um, so let's uh, run our test. Uh, and we're seeing exactly the same uh, picture as you have seen. Uh, on the left side, you are seeing um, command log. Yeah, it's th that is something, s some problems with Wi Fi connection, I suppose, because it's loading very so slowly. Yeah, it's just, it looks like a problem. Let me rerun this test. I think there is a problem with connection. It can it cannot be without problem when you are uh, showing something. Um, and as a try, and I will ask for some help to fix my internet connection. Yeah, accidentally, free Wi-Fi is only working Wi-Fi in this center, and uh, we're again trying to visit our page and trying to make something, and nothing works. Let me die, please. <laughs> okay. Okay, let, let, let me rerun everything. I will try again. You will sit there until I will succeed. It loads. <laughs> Finally, I am sorry. Yeah, so 
uh, what we are doing here. On the left side, yeah, I will bring this up. Uh, on the left side, you can see the command log. Uh, exactly what we were writing in our task. We are visiting the page, uh, checking that page contains speakers line up, and check what's going on there. Uh, what's interesting, we can, uh, moreover, that we can on show with view the actual comments, we can uh, hover the page and see uh, the preview. On the right side, you can see the preview of page, uh, how it was looking exactly when this comment appeared. You can click on this comment and you will see that this application is still uh, in that state. There is highlighted speakers lineup uh, that was uh, required, uh, that was interacted by, by test. You can, for example, hide this highlighting, open DevTools, and work with this page on the right side exactly like with the real application. You can use DevTools to check CSS, CSS classes. Uh, you can use it, uh, for example, to check network requests that are doing by Cypress, that are doing by your application during the test. You can do everything as you are doing with a native application uh, because it's an application. If we will open it and hover this stuff, uh, you will see that this is an iframe uh, with your application demo, and that's how it works. Cypress loads an iframe and then interacts with this iframe. This is really important because your tests are executed in the same run loop as your application, which allows you to do a lot of interesting things. Let me show you them. Uh, let's, for example, broke our tests. Uh, let's say that we are, we want speakers, we want 60 speakers here, okay, 60. Our tests will be automatically reloaded and you can see that uh, right now Cypress have uh, a lot of much bigger delay than previously. Let's run it. It's, uh, it become so long. What Cypress is trying to do right now and that uh, one of the most valuable feature, I think the second after the interaction, in this time, Cypress is trying to check, hmm, maybe these uh, four speakers are animating right now and I cannot just take them a look or uh, I cannot see it or maybe it they will just load it in a second. I should wait and if it will be not, uh, enough speakers in five seconds, for example, I don't know, default timeout is three seconds actually, uh, I will fail. Uh, what? Why it is needed? It calls like retryability. Cypress retries the same command if the command was not executed. It is not, con yeah, n not all the commands are retriable, uh, but most commands like get the element, Click on the click on the element is not retriable because it can change something in your application. Type to the element uh, because Cypress knows that modern applications are always changeable, so something can be changed on your screen. And here I have even more interesting example for you. I hope it will be loaded. It is normal Dev JS. Uh, here we will try to uh, test counters on, th on the page. You know all these counters, each conference has these counters. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speakers. Uh, and I apologize <laughs> because uh, let me explain what I'm saying about. Um, we will test these speakers, oh, these counters. Uh, but for some reason, TestCon conference today was updated, today's site was updated, and there is no more counters <laughs> Everything is aware of me today. Uh, so uh, we will try, uh, yeah, I just uh, changed the conference website to the uh, another one by this by these owners and we will try to um, use their website. Let me show you. This test is skipped. I will tell you in a minute why, why, why it's skipped. And what we are testing? We are checking that there is some percent value, some counter with a value 
800. And here it is. Yeah. It is slow enough. And here it is. And everybody can write this test. But not everybody can write test like this. Let's try that we want to check that there is a state when this counter is 5. It shows 5. Sum of counter on the screen shows 5. And what we are seeing, uh, let's scroll to this one, and you can see that the tests are passing, but actually the state of application shows that there is no 5s on the screen. Uh, let's show it. And you can see that Cypress caught the state when this counter shows 5. Uh, and what, why it's important? Because a real user can see this 5 on screen, uh, even if it's animated really, really fast. And Cypress can do it as well, because Cypress actually lives in your application. It can do everything that can do any real user. And we will, uh, if we will try to uh, test it several times, you will see that it's possible that Cypress is missing 5 somewhere. And it will show you, yeah, it's still 5, but it can miss 5 somewhere, and it will show you another state when it will be, for example, 15. Why it's going on? Uh, because Cypress is actually trying and trying and trying to, five to find this element. Uh, this is, uh, was not loaded. Cypress is trying to find this element uh, more and more. And if your machine is not fast enough, you will just miss the step when it was 5 on the screen. That's why it was skip it and it actually it will fail on CI because it's fast enough. And I know that uh, this is not like a real world example. That you will not write such tests, but it shows all Cypress power. Even with such fast and interactive animations, Cypress can take your state when it was displayed on the screen, test it, it can even stop your application, test it, save the snapshot, and then, you and then continue your application flow. And this is what makes Cypress so re reliable. Um, I have also, yeah, I have two more things to show you with Cypress. Uh, yeah, we're saying that uh, Cypress, is Cypress tests are written in JavaScript. Uh, so if we will do like, let me skip this test, and let me write not a skip, but make a typo. And you can see that nothing is actually saying me that I made a mistake. If we will open Cypress and try to run it, sorry, you will see that this test is actually problem. There is some syntax problem in test, and it cannot be run. Uh, and this is a kind of problem of JavaScript that is also so th that is also uh, not a real problem, because with Cypress you can do the following thing: you can add one file to your configuration. Uh, you can find this on documentation. There's nothing interesting there, and rename your extension from JS to TS. What you are doing? You are try You are saying your IDE your editor, that it is TypeScript now. And if you will make the same mistake, you will see actually the problem. Uh, moreover, who loves writing docs? Nobody, right? Uh, Cypress, in Cypress we're uh, taking like 25% uh, of time trying to write docs, and I need to restart my editor anymore. Thank you, editor. Uh, to show you uh, the auto-completion by Cypress. So all the properties now, if you are changing this, uh, you're changing your extension to TS, are now auto-completed. Moreover, if you will uh, hover on any comment, you will see uh, a short description, you will see the link to the documentation and a short example. It really helps, uh, especially for a new users, to write Cypress test, because it is really possible to write test uh, without documentation. You can, for example, like check uh, where, where, where quickly open the documentation page and do everything you want. Uh, but your tests are still JavaScript, 
and are still dynamic and are not uh, there's no performance uh, problems where we are compiling TypeScript to JavaScript right there. Okay, uh, documentation is really important, but what is more important, it's advanced level. Here's advanced spec, and I will <laughs> I will show you quickly how it works. For that, I need again to open Cypress. And we will just see how Cypress is uh, works live. This is one spec. It's actually just testing the navigation uh, and um, displaying your application on this state. It is uh, just taking all the links through the application and going through the all the links, going through the, the uh, pagination on speaker's page, and going to contact us page. And we are seeing that there is a problem. And why I did love this test? Uh, because actually um, there were a contact form right there. And there is no more contact form anymore. I suppose that there is some issue of uh, the latest deployment. Because uh, this is like, I, I caught bug for free. No, no problems. Uh, because there is just like a markup problem right there. And no more form. I don't know maybe test con organizers doesn't work and doesn't want any feedback. Uh, so yeah, like Cypress allows you to write tests that will be as reliable as possible, and will be really fast and interactive. That's what you can see. Uh, and now, when you saw a Cypress demo with all these problems, uh, we can get back to the boring, and can talk in a little. Oh, I have even closed the presentation. We are continuing our presentation. And we can back to boring. We can back to theory. And we can think in a little uh, why Cypress uh, is interactive, reliable, and what is the cost. Because everything has their cost. And we will try to do that by comparing with Selenium architecture. Two different designs. Uh, again, I'm not trying to say that Cypress is better than Selenium. Everybody has their advantages, disadvantages, and drawbacks. Uh, here is Selenium. How Selenium works? It's pretty good user architecture. Uh, our code right there uh, talks to the web driver what we want to do with browser. Web drivers says it to browser and everything works. Right? Uh, problems. Uh, these arrows, these connections between browser and code, uh, between web driver and browser, browser and web, web driver are uh, HTTP based. So when you are wa when you want to execute something, uh, your code makes an HTTP request to the driver, then driver makes an HTTP request to browser, and all this connection, all this commu communication is only one way flow. Uh, there is no way to just get the feedback of browser, oh wait, I'm animating something, or like anything. And that's kind of a problem, because everything, modern application are always changing. Uh, everything is changing. We're entering something, something appeared animation was started and this is a problem uh, what which is like we are trying to solve with Cypress retriability and Cypress dis architecture let's compare Cypress architecture and Cypress actually it's more like a proxy between your code and your browser browser is uh, Cypress what's doing Cypress uh, it is taking your code brings it to browser and say okay I will run it right there uh, and will interact with application that is loaded on the same page with iframe. And that makes Cypress to do a lot of a lot of things. As I have said, it can stop application. It can, it can wait while some element will be loaded. It can do a lot more things uh, that Selenium is doing with page and with UI, but it is also can not do a lot of things that Selenium is doing. Uh, yeah. I have, uh, yeah, 
also there is a nice thing with uh, Cypress. Uh, because Cypress is actually is uh, not outside of your application, but it's like inside your application, uh, Cypress can more uh, properly simulate the user behavior. Uh, let me check. Let me show you next slide. And here you can see a strange word, actionability. Uh, it's our term that we are using to determine that some control on the page is actually possible to use for a real user. For example, if you are opening a page and cannot see a button, you will never be able to click on that if you are a real user. Uh, that's why Cypress always, if you need to click on button or type something, something in a field, it will first scroll this element into view and then will try to find it. It will not uh, simulate any event if field is hidden, if something is disabled, read only, or even if uh, set it, it's set like width 0 pixels, height 0 pixels. Uh, then uh, this element will never be displayed on the page and then Cypress will never be interact with it. And that makes also, that's, that's a, lot of a lot more confidence and a lot more reliab reliability to your tests. Because your tests working exactly like your user doing. And actually that's why Cypress uh, can use only one language. Because your tests are executed right in a browser, you know that browser a browser can execute only JavaScript. That's why Cypress tests can be written only in JavaScript, or with any compiled to JavaScript language like TypeScript. It's one top. Because of our application is inside and our tests are inside a top, it will be like a giant security hole. It, it, it will be possible to interact with other top from another top or another window. And it's not possible any anyhow. And that's why one browser, at least possible, at least for now, I'm sorry. Uh, one browser, why one browser? Because of our Cypress tests are executing right in the browser, we're using a lot of browser-specific functionality. Uh, yeah, if we'll compare it to, to Selenium, which have WebDriver outside of browser, and all the browsers are implementing WebDriver, WebDriver interface, uh, we need to do that for each specific browser, which is just a tons of work, and we are working on that. But for now, you can use only one browser, uh, at least only one browser language, and engine is Chrome. And also, that's why Cypress is less flaky, so fast, and interactive. Because we are living in the same run loop as your application doing. Yeah, I know that it looks like the end, but it's not the end. <laughs> I have, uh, yeah, I have not, uh, like, uh, get the right transition between these two, two parts of application. So do you remember that our talk is called, like, uh, visual and functional and visual testing. So we are we will talking a little about visual regression. And uh, please raise your hand if you have tried visual regression or, or been doing visual regression. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, sorry. And right now, raise your hand if you have heard about and you know what uh, what visual regression is. Okay. Uh, so that's why we need to explain it. Visual regression is a type of testing when we are trying to test uh, that our application design, how application looks for user, was not changed from previous release, for example. Uh, how we can do that? We can just take two screenshots of application, sit, and compare it for a long day. Yeah, that's not super uh, nice way to do that. What we can do? We can also use some automate tool uh, for visual regression. So here I have two awful quality pictures, and can you see difference? Yeah, and on yeah, some people can, some people not, but there are. Uh, you can see that actually on the left side we are seeing icons, and on the right we are not seeing it. And it is really s some s some things that are uh, possible to lose when you are. Uh, get used to application. So uh, visual regression allows you to just automatically compare what's uh, doing with your application UI. Why do we do that? 
why do we need that? Uh, it's a nice question because we don't want our application looks like this. Uh, this is a Stack Overflow when there was a problem with uh, not loaded CSS and everything works. All the links are working uh, and even functional tasks like end-to-end -end tasks will not see any problem because all the controls right here, all the attributes are there. Uh, we can do go to any page, we can see any content, but real user will not use this application. And I have a story when we uh, one time uh <laughs> just uh, yeah, w we were so, so lucky, but we have uh, pushed to the production uh, a page with a widget that were looks like this without CSS at all, because we have some tests and we were not just like doing any manual regression, and this is a problem. I know that th such things are really hard to miss or something, uh, but uh, a lot of things can be changed without actually a lot of load for you. So do you remember manual regressions? How we can, uh, how we've been doing like uh, each uh, each end of sprint, we are sitting three days and manually regress the application uh, with giant Google Doc. Yeah, it was nice times. And in one company I worked before Cypress, we've been doing more. We are doing, uh, we've been doing visual regression. So this uh, visual regression uh, doc contains all the screenshots and our QAs was needed to prove that our application was not changed visually. Uh, and before these regressions, our QAs were like this. Uh, and if you want to be not like this, but like this, I will show you how to do that. Uh, I will show you an example how we can use visual regression service with uh, uh, Cypress and we will use Percy. It's a visual regression service. It allows you to record 5,000 of uh, tests of visual snapshots per month free, for free. So it can even be used really in commercial applications. And what do you do in it? You need to install it. Uh, also, you need to connect to configuration file and add some code there. I think there will be, th there will be no problems. And also you can you need to register in Percy and get the proper um, key for running our tests. There is uh, nothing really specific there. And then run them. So we are visiting the page and saying Cy Percy Snapshot Main. Main is the name of our application or uh, the name of Snapshot. And again my formula and I'll show you. I'm sorry, but I need to show you that, how it works. I have a visual spec.js that is doing two snapshots, exactly the same I said before. We're visiting some page and then doing Percy snapshot and giving some name there. Let's run it. Uh, this is a Percy token that you need to uh, get from Percy when you will set up your project. Uh, and then you're just doing npx percy exec minus minus cypress run. Uh, yeah, and we can see that percy has started build number 11. Let's open it. Yeah, let's not wait to the, uh, this build to be end. Uh, we will get back to it in a minute, and I will show you the most interesting part of this presentation. Uh, yeah, my failures were the most interesting, I know. Uh, yeah, and uh, do you know how uh, application, how our website, conference website changes after a conference starts? We can take that. Today I have started a build, this one. Uh, that check how website change it after conference starts and what we can see right there we can see that there is no more uh this timer and it's it's, it's expected there is uh, some when uh, min menu shows location where the conference starts uh also we can see that everything was lifted several pixels up and that's like uh that's not like a problem but interesting to know that 
uh, here we can see an interesting art. <laughs> and there is still no more timers right there. Uh, and the, the most interesting things are on the second screenshot. Still, maybe I will, uh, I uh, got a bug for Testcon website, but as you can see, that here we have this triangle icon, but here we have this triangle icon. Release blocker. Uh, and we know about that. If you will just, <laughs> if you will be a developer of TestCon website, you will never see this bug. <laughs> and that's, th that's normal. And that's what this applications, that's what Visual Regression Service actually is doing all the time. Moreover, it's a little bit clever uh, than uh, actually just doing screenshot. Uh, so we can change the width. Uh, and here we can see that also this menu was changed. Uh, this hamburger menu button. How it works? Uh, very simple. It still saves the snapshot and renders it with different widths and in different browsers. Uh, and that's all. Uh, with my failures, I have no more time right there. So um, I have useful links right there. And everything I want to say is that be your friends with your testing tools and then everything will be enjoyed.